um, today I'll be speaking very briefly on the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. Please let's pay attention because this will enlighten you and it will bless you. Hallelujah. Um, let's go to the book of James. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 from verse 2. He says, For in many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, that's a mature man, and able also to bridle the whole body. He says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Um, the more modern translations say with a very small rudder. Whithersoever the governor listeth or wills or desires, he says, even so the tongue. I always like to stop reading that there so that it brings out the meaning. He says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. So they are, you know, the Bible they're talking about, look, before then it was saying that man, you can tame, or after that it was saying that man can, has tamed all kinds of animals, but nobody has been able, you know, to tame the tongue. Then he began to give us these illustrations. He says, when you put bits in the mouth of horses, that just with those bits that you put in the mouth of horses, you are able to control the horses, okay? So that the horses can, the, the horses can turn whichever way you want them to turn. And then he, he also says that even the ships, the ships are these big water vessels. He says, even the ships which though they be so great are, and are driven with fierce winds. All right? He says, yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the captain listed. He says, even so is the tongue. Hallelujah. Even so is the tongue. So there, it uses the horse. Horses, you know, the stallions. Horses are symbols of power. Praise the Lord. That is why in our national coat of arms, you have those horses there. They are symbols of strength. Praise God. But he's telling you that as, as big and as powerful as horses are, that you just put bits. Once you can have their mouths under control, then you have the horse, the entire horse under control. So he's telling you that it doesn't matter how powerful things are, you can control them if you can get the mouth. Here, by the way, when he talks about tongue, let me just clarify that. When he talks about tongue, yes, granted, in a sense, he's talking about the, you know, the little fleshy organ in your mouth, but tongue there is actually symbolic of words. Praise the Lord. And you find that in verse 2 there, when he, start, when, when he, started, when he started talking, he said, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in words, the same is a perfect man. So the context is words. So when he says tongues, tongue or tongue there, the tongue there is, a, is representative of words that we speak. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So when he says tongue, he's talking about words. Hallelujah. Just that when he says mouth, he's actually talking about words because that's where words emanate from, at least physically. Hallelujah. So he talks about these strong animals, these horses, and he says that once you have their mouths controlled, then you have them controlled. 
And it talks about this one, that large vessel. So these ones are powerful, these ones are large. But it says that with their size, they are controlled only. Now it says they are large and then they are what? They are driven with fair, fierce winds. Glory to God. So in spite of their size, it will be amazing enough if you are able to drive the ship with just that small rudder inside the captain holds. Hallelujah. If winds were not driving them. But the Bible says that even when they are driven by fierce winds, that with that small rudder, you can actually control them in spite of the winds and in spite of their size. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, so is the tongue. So when we confess, when, when, when we make confessions, when we tell you don't say that, it's not, we, we don't make confessions as an academic exercise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The tongue is powerful. Yes, Glory to God. Hallelujah. The tongue is powerful. He says even when fierce winds are driving the ship, the captain has a place he desires for the ship to go. And he says that with that small rudder, are you getting the picture? That he just drives it wherever he wants it to go. <laughs> so what is he saying? Whatever wind that is driving your life, hallelujah, whatever winds that are driving your lives, whatever things are buffeting you and trying to toss to you, toss to you, excuse me, with just that little rudder in your mouth, you can give direction to your life according to your desire. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? You know those vessels, you know this, these kinds of uh, holiday vessels that people, you know, take their families and then you have, it's like, it's like a big hotel floating. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of those vessels are bigger than some very large hotels in the world. So people, the Bible says as big as all of that is, it's just the captain with one small rudder. <laughs> that is why you don't hear these days that the ship took off from um, maybe the coast of Mexico and it wants to come to Cape Town, South Africa and it ended up in Florida. No. Are you with me? The captain has a place in mind. There are winds, there are waves, there, is the, there are all the forces of nature acting on the ship, but with the small rudder. The Bible says he directs it exactly to birth where he wants it to, according to his desire. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what, just like I was saying the other day, that when we look, we need to look not to see. We need to look to create. Because you see, seeing is an involuntary action. If something exists and it's within your field of vision, you will see it. When you look, you look to create. So that's why he says, why we look not at the things that are seen. They are seen. You don't, you cannot help seeing them, but you can decide not to look at them. Are you still here? Because you see, glory to Jesus. But you see, because you see, when you refuse to look at them, you have moved from the realm of just, of just um, seeing and observing, you have moved into the realm of creating. So Abraham considered not his own body now dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. What? what? Because those are the things that I, the Bible didn't say he didn't see them. He says he didn't consider them. Hallelujah. Because there are things you cannot help seeing. They are negatives you cannot help seeing. But when it comes to looking, you have a choice. When it comes to considering, when it comes to dwelling on something, you have a choice. So I choose deliberately <laughs> what I look at. May not be able to help what I see, but what I look at people, I need to be careful. I need to choose it deliberately. It's the same thing with what you say. 
You can be a reporter. Hallelujah. You can be a reporter reporting everything that is happening around you. Words are not innocent. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everything you see that exists, they exist because words were spoken. True. By faith, we understand that the universe was framed by the word of God and that the things that are seen were not made of the things that are visible. The world was framed by God speaking. He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Hallelujah. So when words are spoken deliberately, when words are spoken by faith, they, have, they, they are like the rudder that controls the direction of your life. So first of all, what do I desire? Then I begin to speak it. The Bible says, if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. So if I get the word of God, and then I begin to speak the word of God, hallelujah, I am direct, because it says, I know the thoughts I think concerning you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. As I always tell us in this kingdom, thank God for the gospel of grace, but nothing is automatic. So things don't happen accidentally on purpose. In the kingdom, there is deliberateness. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that with the tongue, the captain directs the ship in spite of the winds. So what that means is that the problem is not the winds. Hallelujah. The problem is not the winds. The problem is what do you, where are you going first? Do you know where you are going? Hallelujah. Do you have the mind of God? Do you have the will of God? Do you have an understanding of who you are? So you need to know who you are. Once you know who you are, the rest is left to what do you do with the rudder inside your mouth? Because that's what you used to stir the ship of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your words literally determine the course of your life. Now, when we talk about words, it's, it's important that we understand words in context. Words are not as simple. You know, the Bible says, Behold, how great a matter a little fire can let. Basically, just telling you how small the tongue is. <laughs> okay? But in the context of, of what is being said, it is talking about how small the tongue is and just a metaphor for how we approach words. We approach words as they are small. Amen. Amen. So I just talk. You know, I just say things. I, I, we were just joking, you know. I just say things. Besides being unserious in talking, Christians these days increasingly, I hear Christians use swear words, use four letter words, you know, just say things. It's just talk, you know. It's street talk, it's um, all these kind of words they use for those things. Now. But you need to be deliberate about talking. Because what you say, you're using it to direct your life. Hallelujah. It's a little member. So we treat words as if words are, mm, they are nothing, they are not important. But words are extremely important. The way I like to understand words is that there is the body of the words. Words has a body. That's what everybody relates with. Say. That is what they say you communicated a meaning, but it's not necessarily true. If it's those that um, studied linguistics, there's something called syntax. T syntax just basically talks about how you arrange the words to make a sentence, make a phrase. Hallelujah. That is the structure. That is the body. Hallelujah. So, when I say, when you sit down and you're listening to somebody speak, a motivational speaker, an English teacher, you are looking at syntax, the way the words are arranged, the play of words, that's what gets you, that's what holds your attention, praise God. And that is good. That is, words also has a soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Words also have a soul. So words are not just the syntax or whatever, how I arranged it. If I, if I come and I, I was, thank God I just remember the title of that message. So if I come to you, Gomi Sola, and I say, who do you think you are? You can say, 
I am a born again child of God. Jesus Christ has died on the cross for my sins. I am redeemed from the power of the enemy and so on and so forth. All right? But I cannot also come to you and say, who do you think you are? And you can say, are you asking me that question? Are you, who do you think you are? Are you getting the picture? You know, I said the same thing. If you wrote it down, the punctuations, everything is the same. But you know, it did not communicate the same thing to you because of the soul of what was spoken. Are you here? So words are not just because the thing looks the same thing when it is written doesn't mean it says the same thing. Words have emotions. That is why words can hurt you. I can, you can be in Canada and I can hurt you from Akure by just picking a phone and calling you. I hope you know that. I can spoil your day. I can spoil your week by just calling you, sending you words. I don't have to touch you. I don't have to see you. Words are powerful. Hallelujah. So words have a soul. That is why the Bible says if any man does not offend in words, then that man is perfect. That, that man is mature. The ability to use words is a sign of maturity. <laughs> Look, words are greater than weapons of war. Words can disarm people. I mean, somebody is coming to kill and somebody just speaks. The person doesn't resist him. The person just speaks to him. And he just drops the weapon. And the scripture says that much. Hallelujah. Praise God. So words can be used to disarm people because words, have, words are powerful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I was saying that words can disarm people. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1, it says, A soft answer does what? Turns away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. You can use words to disarm people. Your husband can be bishop, archbishop, pope, never hurt a fly. <laughs> but I tell you, there's something that you can say and you push that, you will be amazed. When the man manifests, you'll be wondering. You say, are you not born again again? No, the problem was that you didn't speak like a born again Christian. You that spoke. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You know I stand on physical counseling, right? You will sit in the bathroom if you do that. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says that a soft answer turns away words. That's the soul of what was said. But grievous words, the Bible says they stir up anger. People have been killed because of what they said in the heat of the moment. Hallelujah. So what I'm just trying to establish is that words are powerful. Words are powerful. People don't know you until you speak. The impression people have on you, of you a lot of times, is the sum total of everything you have said as they have interacted with you. They take you as a serious person. They take you as a not so serious person. They take you as a mature person. They take you as a not because of what you said. As they, it's not because of your age. It's because of how you've come across in discussions. You are imputes as you have spoken to the people. But usually everybody is a mystery until they begin to speak. If you come into a meeting and somebody is not talking, you don't know who the person is. When the person talks, the person announces himself. That's why somebody can be wearing shorts in a place. And of course, nobody you knows in most societies, just like ours, when you dress a certain way, nobody pays your attention. Everybody pays attention to the guys that wear the expensive clothes and the beautiful and the you know, expensive perfumes. But you can be wearing those things. Once you open your mouth and talk, you steal the entire show, as they say. Because as you talk, you don't have to say, I am. What you say just announces who you are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. And nobody knows you until you talk.
The Bible says that even a fool in chapter 17 of um, Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 28 of Proverbs, the Bible says that even a fool, when he holds his peace, he is considered wise. Because you don't know he's a fool until he talks. He can form wisdom. The, the key is don't talk. Have you gone to some meetings with some people and say, please, whatever they say, don't talk. The Bible says if he shutteth his mouth, he's considered a man of understanding. Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you go to a place, they are discussing a topic you don't understand. Look, if you can't talk intelligently, you can smile intelligently. And nod intelligently. You know, you say, I see. I see. Although you didn't see anything. Hallelujah. The Bible says even a fool, certified fool, if he shuts his mouth, he's considered a man of understanding. Once you open your mouth, you've announced yourself. You've announced your ignorance. Hallelujah. That will be good for your image. Praise God. No man can define you until you speak. It's when you speak, that's when people are able to define you. Praise God. So I said that words don't just have the body, which is the structure of what is spoken, but words also have a soul. I'm just using this because we are Christians. It will make it easy for you to understand. Words carry emotions beyond what is said. That is why you can say the same thing in two different ways and they have the opposite effect to each other. It's the law of communication. Hallelujah. The Lord. So what you want people to understand is not just what you said. It is what you meant. You know there's a difference between what you said and what you meant. Whenever you talk... You must be sure that even the modulation of your voice is such that it communicates what you mean, not just what you're saying. Because you can say one thing and mean something else, or you can say one thing and mean several things, depending on how you said it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wish I was doing a training on communication today. Hallelujah. Well, let's, let's, let's quickly just tidy this up. So I've talked about the the, the, the structure, I've talked about the emotion or the soul behind what is spoken. But there is something even more important that words have. is the spirit of what is spoken. And that really is what concerns us most. Because we live in a spiritual world. Praise the Lord. We live in a spiritual world. And it's important for us to understand that words are spiritual first and foremost. When you speak, God is listening. When you speak, the angels are listening. When you speak, the devil is listening. You know, the Bible talks about the angels, how they excel in strength and how they hearken unto the word of the Lord. So whenever you speak the word of God, whenever you speak as the oracle of God, you activate angelic ministry because the mini angels cannot hear God's word and not take action. But the Bible says they hearken to the voice of his word. So when you say, I am blessed, hallelujah. Amen. When you say everything is working together for my good. Yeah. When you say no man is permitted to be against me because God is for me, the angels are looking for the people that are trying to be against you to establish. Because the Bible says they are ministering spirits and they have been sent to you to minister for you because you are an heir of salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. So there is the spirit. There is the spirit of what is spoken. So words are spiritual. So we need to understand that the, 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 that words that are spoken, words are weapons in the spirit. Words are weapons in the spirit. So when we speak words, we need to have an attitude, we need to have an understanding, not just when we speak words, but when words are speaking to us or over us. 
There are words that are not necessarily spoken directly to you, but when you hear it, <laughs> you know, the Bible says you should take heed how you hear. So just like you don't look at things because you see it, you don't hear things because it was spoken. There are things you hear and you cancel. Because if somebody comes to Akure and says in Akure, before the end of the month of July, that it is very likely that 100,000 persons are going to be dead. The person just, you live in Akure? Am I correct? So what was said, your name wasn't mentioned, but indirectly they, talk, they are talking about you. So what, it was words that were spoken to you. So what do you do? You also speak words. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But words are not, words are not, words are not innocent. And we use words not just against the devil, but we also use words against men. When men try to be instruments in the hands of the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. These are, real, these are real things. Words are not, they are not innocent. Let me just show you a scripture too. And then we'll just, we'll just wrap this we we'll just wrap this up. Now we know that we use um, in spiritual warfare, the Bible talks about how you put on the whole armor of God. We remember helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, um, preparation of the gospel of, of peace for your feet and all of that. And then it says you should take up the sword of the spirit, which is words. The word of God. Take up the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Take up the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Hallelujah. So you take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It says praying all prayer and all supplication. So when we pray prayers, we need to be praying God's word. Hallelujah. We don't just talk. Hallelujah. That is why you cannot pray effectively if you don't have the word. God can't even speak to you if you don't have the word. Because you wouldn't know who is speaking to you. Hallelujah. So it's a weapon of offense against the devil. It's a weapon of offense against, you know, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. But even, um, even in, the, in, our, in our everyday um, conduct, words, are, let me show you a couple of places, because it's not only in um, Ephesians chapter 6 that, the word, that there's a parallel drawn between the word of God and weapons. Hallelujah. If you go to the book of um, Job, I believe, chapter, I hope I have that reference, chapter 15, Job chapter 5. Oh dear Lord, help me. He said, but he saved the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. Praise the Lord. So there's a parallel that when, as I said, when you see that tongue or mouth, he's talking about it. So he says, saves them from the sword and from their mouth and from the sword of the mighty. If you go on to verse 20 in the same Job chapter 5, he says, in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. The next verse says, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Hallelujah. The tongue is powerful. Hallelujah. There is a reason why there is an ex express commandment in chapter 20 of the book of Exodus that you should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You know, you can destroy people by bearing false witness against them. In fact, in these days of social media, all you need to do is to suggest. It doesn't even have to be true. <laughs> you say, I slapped the man. What happened? Go and ask him what happened. Did he attack you? Did he try to rape you? I slapped him. Throw out the suggestion out there and let them be struggling with it. Then the other person is trying to manage his reputation. Words are powerful. Hallelujah. Now, because most of you that are listening to me, you have confidence in my credibility. You can imagine if I come to you and tell you something about somebody that is not true. You will believe it without confirming with the person. Praise the Lord. And you would have destroyed that person. And or rather, I would have destroyed that person. I didn't see the person. I didn't go. I just said something about the person. But I was just trying to establish there that there is a connection between the sword and the tongue. This, the tongue can destroy even at that level. Hallelujah. But also spiritually, when pronouncements are made. That's why if you go to chapter 54, verse 17 of the book of Isaiah, he says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that's a weapon. So when somebody speaks against you, don't wait till the person brings a dagger or a sword. If it doesn't sound like what God said, you say, in the name of Jesus, I reject that. 
Don't say it is not my portion. Nobody say it's not my portion. It's not my portion. That's what I'm saying. Say in the name of Jesus, I reject that. And most times, if you have the word of God, you already have a counter scripture on the tip of your tongue, and you speak it so that just like you heard what the person said, the person will hear what you said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I time somebody comes and starts to remind you that you are the first son and she being a grandmother almost a hundred years old that your grandfather died at about 50 your father died at about 50 my son try and be careful he didn't tell you to be she didn't tell you to be careful or he didn't tell you to be careful he just told you that you should be prepared to die at the age of 50. if you don't interpret it properly you will just nod and say yes sir when you said yes sir you just said amen hallelujah so i reject it in the name of jesus with long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation hallelujah he will satisfy me the number of my days he will fulfill hallelujah that words are weapons words have body they have soul they have spirit so every word that is spoken against you, every word you hear, if it pertains to you, there are two responses that it invites. The Bible says every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you condemn. Hallelujah. Or if it's a word that says what God says, if it's a word that is speaking as God's record, then the response is amen. Hallelujah. That's when we pray over you, don't nod your head like a modern man. You know these modern people, they nod their head and they smile sheepishly like that. The response is amen. Hallelujah, it is so. I agree with you. If the two of us shall agree concerning anything. So if I say amen, I have brought the prayer, you bring the amen. That's agreement. It is done. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't just stay there and look because the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's so important. Both death and life is in the power of the tongue. Look around this, 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 um, this our facility. Everything, those of us who have been in church here for five years, everything here was spoken before it appeared. It was being spoken when... <laughs> when it was being spoken, it sounded crazy. You know, you know that somebody says that, you look at the person, yeah, you are we okay? But we are speaking it. We are speaking it. We are speaking it. As we are speaking it, we are creating it. Because we understand that by faith, the universe was framed by the word of God. And that the things that are seen, they were not made of the things that are visible. Hallelujah.